Who can forget the sounds of the 60s? The 1860s. I can't and you can't either. Now, there's Marching Through Georgia, the exciting new album by Billy Webster. All of your favorite hits of the 1860s in one place. Such hits as Gary Owens. The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Quiet along the Potomac tonight. Marching through Georgia. And much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Go to billysongs.com and order your digital download of Billy Webster's Marching Through Georgia today. That's billysongs.com. Studios. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, special live stream of Addressing Gettysburg. Uh, it is the 30th anniversary of the movie Gettysburg, and we have some people who you might recognize. To my left, you uh, his interview came out just uh, this week. Here's Dale Fetzer. He is the military chore- choreographer. That's right. Yeah. Um, on uh, the movie and. To my right is John Rothman, who played General John Reynolds. Hello, John. Hello. Welcome. It's great to have you guys here. Dale, this, you were here last time when we were in the shed. That was our studio, yeah, yeah, right? Um, so this is much, much. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a great it's, improvement. It's a huge improvement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And then, John, this is your first time, and I'm sure it's a, the biggest highlight of your career. There you are. <laughs> yeah. so, I had to rent a couple of bicycles when you were here, remember? Yeah, that's yeah, right. You did. So, so John, um, real quick, you wanted to say something about uh, the strike. and and. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if your listeners are aware. Oh, but they're aware. They're, Okay, so there's a right now the actors are on strike against the um, what's called the AMPTP. It's the producers and and uh, movie producers, but mostly streamers, the the like Netflix, Netflix, Amazon, and, yeah. and I'm on the negotiating committee, so I'm way too familiar with the issues and this and what's going on. Um, the um, negotiations, which were, I was in LA last week negotiating with the CEOs of, of Disney, Amazon, uh, not, not Amazon, Disney, Netflix, Warner Brothers, and Universal across the table. And last, and on Wednesday, the, the negotiations fell apart. We were too far apart. Um, and at the moment, the actors are back on the picket line and waiting to resume the negotiations. Okay. Um, it's, I mean, I don't, well, what's relevant to say is that part of the, the, the rules of the strike, during the strike, actors are not supposed to be promoting right. products of the AMPTP. Okay. Um, Gettysburg, well, I mean... It was Turner, it's Warner Brothers. It is associated with AMPTP. If you want to buy Gettysburg now, you do it on Amazon Mm -hmm. or Amazon Mm -hmm. Prime. So that, so technically I am not supposed to be doing anything to promote the movie. Okay. Let me say in the context of this weekend and the 30th anniversary, I don't need to promote this movie. No. (laughs) Everybody here is here because they love this movie. Sure. Because they have a relationship with this movie. Yeah. I'm not saying people, oh, you should right. come out and buy this movie. They own right. this movie. Exactly. So there's no, I don't see a conflict. And it's interesting, I was just doing an autograph signing for hours mm-hmm. <laughs> today, and, my, and I was texting my wife about it a little bit, and she said, are these people movie buffs or history buffs? And I haven't answered her yet, but they're they're both, but history, I would say first. Yes. Their relationship is with Gettysburg yeah. and the Battle of Gettysburg more than with a movie. The movie may have inspired them to Absolutely. be interested in Gettysburg. This weekend that we're participating in is a benefit for the 
Gettysburg for a museum in Gettysburg right. for for this for preserving the and and not just preserving the memory of Gettysburg, but you know, making Gettysburg and what happened here um, a part of people's lives. And you know, in this moment in our history, it seems incredibly important to be reminded of the sacrifices that people made um, to save our democracy and yeah. our country. I agree. And um, so that, you know, that's sort of why I'm here. And, I, and I've been here for a day or so, and it's been very um, reinforcing in those terms. I mean, the people that I've met and the what's going on here. Yeah. And listening to to Ron Daniels, the director, this morning, and Stephen Lang and, and Tom Barringer, the sort of stars of this movie, which I am not, talk about it and their relationship to it and the fact that they're here. Yeah. It's been inspiring, frankly. So It, it is inspiring, and uh, it has inspired a lot of us. I mean, I would not be sitting here talking to you today if this movie never was made. But let me say, um, Go ahead. and I'll Go ahead. then we'll... Yeah. move off the strike. But one of the issues in the strike, one of the key issues in the strike has to do with AI yeah. and the use of digital replicas, which now they can replicate an actor, you know, in 10 minutes and have a, a digital act replica. And how they use that is something that we're extremely concerned about. Sure. Um, you know, more f for background actors than for actors like me. I mean, but background acting, what makes this movie work in, in, to a great extent are the 3,000 or, I mean, this morning they were talking, I was surprised that they were talking about Pickett's Charge, 5,000. 5,500. 5,500. Yeah. yeah. Human beings, people. <laughs> and no, and that even if they're just fight, shooting a gun and fighting a battle, they're people. And it registers on some, there actually are, you know, sort of, they, there's studies there's, that even, even if you can't tell, if you think it looks like a person, if it's not, you know it. Yes. In yeah, some absolutely. way. Yeah. But, but whether they can, you know, chat GBT at some point can, 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 can make it so it, you really can't tell. The reason this movie, what was happening on those battlefields, what was happening, I mean, all right, I'm, I'm skipping ahead to like my, my experience. Yeah, go ahead. Like one of the things that, that I'll never forget was the first time I rolled the horse out on that battlefield and it was B, it was the second unit. Yep. It wasn't, it wasn't even the main thing. It was right. the second unit. They were just shooting the battle scenes and it was, you know, not. It was the day that I was shot, but I didn't do that that day. I was just, you know, riding on the battle. But as soon as I came on the battlefield, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of men are are saluting me and saying, <laughs> "General Reynolds, sir." Hoopla! Yeah. And and it was like suddenly I was transported into like the reality. You know, this the the level of reality yeah. and of commitment. That was that was in that space. That is an energy that gets absorbed into the the acting, and 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 you feel it on the screen. And absolutely, feel absolutely it. shows. That's absolutely shows right through the screen. And yeah. that's you know, and that's because obviously it's a lot cheaper for the studios to use computer Computers. generated. People yeah. then real they don't have to feed them or take care of them or anything like that. Right. So the incentive from a bottom line profit thing, you can see that there would be a strong incentive to 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 use that and you know to use it in all kinds of ways. So that's a big that's a big issue, and we have not come to terms on that. And you know, we have also not come to terms on money issues, which is, I mean, the basic overriding thing is the st streaming streaming residuals the streaming the streamers which is what everybody is how most people are consuming yeah mu everything. movies and media and yeah. everything and more the 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 way that we're paid for that work is not sufficient to live 
to ha- to be a professional artist, right? To to do to pursue this because you don't work; you work sporadically. You have this job, and then you are off for you know until you find your next job. Right, yeah. But the residuals, the money that is paid when you had. Um, Let's say Gettysburg. I, this morning, I'm signing VHS covers, <laughs> right. DVD covers, yeah. theatrical releases all over the world on airplanes. On and that's when you make up your listeners won't know this, or maybe they do, but I'm going to tell you, when you make a movie, you're paid, where the money that they pay you to make it is is the initial release. Mm-hmm. The theatrical release of a movie, you're not, you don't make any residual. Residual is ancillary. It's something that you make down when your movie is sold to a television network. Okay. So when when the maker of the movie sells it or gets it makes a deal to get it on the movie of the week, that licensing fee is divided part of it is divided among the actors. Okay. And you get a payment. When they sell a certain number of DVDs or VHS you know, a certain million or whatever, you get a little cut of that. And you get a cut of everything mm-hmm. down, f- like year, down the and, road. Yeah. So I'm still making, 30 years later, I still get residuals. I mean, they're small, but they're <laughs> residuals for that movie. Make a movie for Netflix. I'm not allowed to promote a Netflix product, so I can't say that I'm in a fantastic Netflix series now that I can't even tell you. Thanks. Look it up. Um, but a Netflix series, you make that and you, it's one day, it was released on August 10th. There's another hint. And it was the number one Netflix drama, scripted drama in the world. And it was released in every country in the world except China mm-hmm. on the same day. No no Ancillary right, no T, VH, nothing. So you, get, you, just, you get paid for just doing the job, and then that's no, it. No, no. We have a system for paying you residuals quarterly based on the number of subscribers, and there's a bonus if it's Netflix because it has the most subscribers. Oh, okay. But but the math doesn't work. I mean, okay. it's not enough right. to make up for the other thing. It's not... So it's a question of okay, we need a rate. We need it to. We need to up that money, and maybe, maybe because of the fact that there aren't isn't a long tail, there aren't ancillary rights. We should be paid more to do it. Yeah. I mean, yes, the minimum should be more. Right. And the other thing that's happened in show business is it used to be every time you did a job, you had a quote. This was your day quote. This was your week quote. And then the next job, they would bump it up a little bit. Uh-huh. And then you would get to, you know, your quote would be, oh, we can't hire you because your quote <laughs> is too much. Yeah. And they say, okay, well, no quote for this job. But now, if, if you're a star, you make plenty of money. If you're just a day player, if you're a journeyman actor, if you're a guy who goes from job to job and you're, you you know, you, you do movie, you do a character parts in movies and you do guest stars on television shows, all of that, that kind of work, everybody, they want everybody to make scale. Okay. They don't want to pay your quote anymore. Yeah. So, so that makes it tough. So the scale better be enough. Right. And it's, it's so complicated. I need a painkiller. Right. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we brought them directly from the hospital just for you. Oh, thank you. Um, you mean so, from the sack. Like. <laughs> so but here's a question that I've been wondering yeah. though since this strike started. Cable. Okay, mm-hmm. HBO, let's say. Mm-hmm. You have a movie that plays on HBO. How does that work? Do you get residuals for that? Yes, sure. So, but 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 what? But what Cable I watch residuals. What there? So, as these technologies have evolved, uh-huh. they've had. We do we do contract negotiations every three years. Okay, and as these technologies evolve, well, okay, we better come up with another structure for that. And cable, one of the things, 
and this is one of the arguments that we have with the producers, with the AMPTP, is when, and I remember because I'm old and I was around, when cable first, they said, ah, it's this thing, you know, we're not sure where this business is going, we don't know who's going to do it, well, give us a break now until we figure out how this business works, you know, we're going to give you less, we're going to give you way less than we gave you for a network, but nobody's watching this, nobody has cable, we'll just, we'll just, just be our partners yeah. and help us get this off the ground. Then when suddenly, wait a minute, everybody's got cable. They say, well, sorry, you know, you made a deal where, no, we're not coming back and renegotiating this. So it's always been a sticking point and more than cable, like DVD residuals, mm. you know, they were, they were the, Hollywood was, the money was pouring in and we weren't get we weren't getting a share of it. And that really traumatized the actors unit okay. because they because that happened when there was a time i mean it's gone but dvd was like ruled the world they were you know they were printing money and we weren't so they're saying it's not going to happen again we're not going we're going to get ahead of this everything is going to be streaming and we want we want to make a, res, a we want to we want our share uh. How, but you've got a situation where streamers are lose, you know, are losing money. They're they're not. It's a business. Their business model, based on subscribers, is questionable. Only Netflix claims to actually make a profit. Right. You know, it's very complex. And can you? Is there a way to it, audit Netflix to see how many views your work is getting? The, well, that's a big. It's a big issue. Transparency is a big issue. Okay. They, we assume, and we. No, they know how many. Sure. They totally know. Yeah. And the companies like Nielsen will tell you. I mean, okay, when this not to be named product of the AMPTP was released that I was in, right. I could follow it on online and see how many people. And I was like, holy God. <laughs> I mean, the world, we were talking the, the week, one of the week where it was number one. Billion minutes watched, minutes watched, over a billion. Wow, minutes watched in the world. I mean, and so we're trying to design a residual that that reflects how many minutes. Watched. But so here's my question, though. So okay, cable, right? Yeah. All right, you got your deal with cable. Then come uh, comes on demand. And so now I, I don't have to wait until HBO plays your movie. I can go and find right. it and watch it anytime I want to. Right. So what did they do there? You got it, buddy. <laughs> no, this is a very big question. Yeah. Because how do you, you can't just say this, this, this show that I, this HBO show that I'm in brought in this much money or brought in these many subscribers. Right. Because if I'm already a subscriber to HBO Max, how do you know? I watch anything yeah. I want. And how I'm not paying know? per view. Right. So, exactly. So, I, so there's nothing exactly. to give you because exactly. they're not receiving anything. It's really, that's, that's yeah. their argument. And that's true. Right. And we tried to, when we tried to figure this out, bring in a third party, a thing called Parrot Analytics okay. that claims to be able to figure out how many people subscribed. They, they, they claim to be able to figure out what, how much of individual show contribute to the bottom line, the revenue of the whole thing. Okay, But nobody, you know, it's, they claim it, but it's, it's highly, I, I mean, we're not doing, we're not any longer pursuing that. But, Eyeballs, yes, we, we can know, or minutes watched. So, how many minutes watched? How many versus how many subscribers? Right, and mi and monetize somehow the minutes, monetize it somehow the minutes watched. That's what we're trying. That's our. That's what we're trying to do. But the reason that we're stuck, the reason that you know the negotiations have broke off and the strike is continuing, is because we haven't figured. It. I mean, we figured it out, right. but they don't. Buy they it. They don't see They're it. They're not way. saying, eh, yeah. no, this doesn't work. And we haven't come up with a formula. So, but the thing with, the, now, back to the AI thing, because I, I hear what you're saying about the extras, right? But 
I mean, I've seen, you know, videos that people make with, you know, the rudimentary AI that we have now of like Tom Cruise giving an interview that he didn't actually give or something like that. And it's believable. So, buddy, you, 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 you think that's good. How about the people, the voice actors, the voice, they can, AI can copy your voice, all the tones, yep. your thing, and replace, I mean, replace a voice. I know, I've seen that too. Like, yeah. There's an Instagram account I follow called AI Beatles, and they make up Beatles esque songs, mm-hmm. and you would swear it's Paul McCartney singing it. Yeah. It's creepy. Yeah. But, but so, so here's but our, someday they will do this with a course. star's face, right? Totally, totally. No. With already they're doing it, Harrison Ford, and the, you know, they're already in, in whatever the, the, Raiders of the Lost Ark, but they, they're not. But they're not making a new film with Harrison Ford's face yet. But that's well, how the about fear, Carrie right? Fisher in in. Oh, but here's the answer. We're we're what we're saying, and and I think we're they're not disagreeing. It's just working out what what are the numbers. We're asking for consent, right, and compensation, which makes sense. If I want to exactly. use your face. John Rothman, right to promote my show, and I want to sell something with your face on. I can't just go online and grab a picture of you and put it there, and then say, you know, buy this whatever with John's face on it. I'd have to get permission from you, and I would have to compensate you for that, right? And so, I, I don't understand how they do. They think that they can just grab your face from anything that they've no, yeah, okay. no. But they were would they? I mean, to give you like the the word the thing that they said that was just like so unbelievable that they would even attempt it, and they and it's no longer they withdrew it. But talking about background actor comes in for a day, you were going to scan you. And we're going to make a digital replica, and we're going to use it. And the first thing they said, we'll pay you. We'll tell you we're doing this. You have to consent, or you consent or you don't. And we'll pay you a day's, for a day's work for, your, for the scan. And then we'll use that. We can use that scan in perpetuity in anything you want. So not just this one film, Excuse anything. Me. You've been paid for one day, and then you'll never work again because they have the nope. digital That's replica. insane. So that... That's well, insane. And they withdrew that. But now oh. where they are is, we'll scan you. You come in for a day that you're working, you're making a thing, we'll scan you. If you're working, if it's a working day, we'll pay you for the day, and then we'll pay you half that for the scan. And then we can use it in that picture. Yeah. We can use it for you in that picture. And we say, okay, sure, you can use it, but pay me if you're using it. You know, pay me my my day rate for every day that you're. Or I every, think the yeah. way that we've come up with it, which really makes sense, is where they end up minutes minutes used in the finished minutes in the film. Okay, we'll pay you for that. So if that character that that guy is in Gettysburg, getting back to Gettysburg, if you're a if you're a Union soldier, but in September all the kids went back to school, so now you have to be a be a Confederate soldier, and you, you're on screen in 10 minutes or something. Each of those minutes gets paid. So I understand from the producer's point of view, you want to save money, all that other stuff. I get that. But now here's the uh, moviegoer's point of view, hmm. this moviegoer's point hmm. of view. I don't want to see computer John Rothman right. perform. I want to see real John Rothman perform. So I, the story... When I watch a movie, the story, of course, matters, right? The, di- the direction, all that stuff matters. But what I want to see is my favorite actors performing a new performance. A computer doing it with their f- scanned face does nothing for me. I won't watch these movies. I would rather go b- back and watch a 30 year old movie like Gettysburg right. or Ghostbusters. Right. They're saying, and and there's a whole category that we're talking about in this thing called the synthetic performer. Yeah, who wants that? The synth. Well, and they and their limitations on synthetic performers mean altering the John Rothman to make him a villain or make him another right. thing, and then which of course I would have to give permission to do it, and sure. I never would. But what if you're making up a character out of it's not a person. It's a character you're creating, a synthetic character. Anyway, it's very complicated. Yeah. But what you're saying is absolutely 
you know, key and and true. And I think it's not. I mean, I think it's generally true that people want to see act. And one of the things that the that the like the, the DGA, the, the directors say, and the people say, you're making a big deal out of this, and it's not really a threat because directors, because filmmakers want to work with actors. That's the job. That's the that's their art. But they over a certain it. age. So that's yes, the thing. Yes, is the younger right. people coming up, they're they're mm. uh, they're used to phone everything is virtual in their world. Yep. From the moment they're born. So they're when they get into filmmaking, they would rather work with computerized John Rothman because John Rothman, the man, is a real person and they don't have people skills. And so they can't work with people. Mm. So they would rather go with the synthetic thing. So for now, you know, you get people, you can see both sides of the story, but there's going to come a time where all of us that understand the analog world are going to be gone. And these kids are going to, and so it's future generations of actors that you guys are really fighting for here. Mm -hmm. Because I think Mm -hmm. there's still enough, there's still enough uh, people out there who are not going to consume this crap. Right. And so they want to see real things. They want to see real right. people doing and something. And one of the this is very true what you're saying. And but one Thank of you. the limit how do you compose how do you limit it since they're actually can do it. I mean it's 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 available to them, but one of the ways to do it is you make it more expensive you make it more expensive to use the computer generated John Rothman than the real yeah. John Rothman. Yeah, you should. And then, the, then, so that's that's kind of strategically now, w- what we're doing. Would they? I mean, they, and I know there's more than one way to do this, but is the idea that they would take your scanned face and put it on uh, uh, an unknown actor who's got a cheaper day rate? Is that the <laughs> idea? And then just have him do well, all the, the ideas? Maybe they would want to, but our idea is they cannot use my face or my any or my voice. Right. Without my permission and without compensating me at a le- first, it's consent. Second is compensation. And the compens, you know, so and you not only you are the union building in limits, but you'll you'll have represent, you know, they'll you can ask for a lot of money for yeah. it and or or not. Or but, not. But it's, you know, I mean, certainly there are actors who are going to say they'll never do it. You know, they'll sure. never give their consent, and they're actors who will, and we'll see. Well, but, so, and then the thing with the consent, though, is um, uh, if let's say I don't know, let, let's say get to a point where where they're, they you know they're like, okay, well, here's the thing, and for whatever reason, you guys don't get your way, but you got to get back to work. Everybody gets to get back to work. You come to some agreement that's not the best. And part of it is that that clause is in the contract. We can use your face in perpetuity. My question is this, though. Mm-hmm. Do, what's to stop all the actors from saying no? And then, I mean, yeah, they don't work, but the producers don't get your image. And then they're going to have well, to go with people who are unknown. What, well, that's what they would have to go with non-union actors, but they don't want to do. I mean, I don't know. It's very. It's complicated. Into, no, because when you're talking about and it's it is very interesting to talk about in the context of Gettysburg and the reenactors. Yeah, because if you're talking about about background, their ability to replace background with CGI I mean, we already know. They already have it. They can already fill a stadium with, yep. but they're, they're using a certain number. They have to use on a feature film, I believe they have to use like 80. I forget exactly. And then they can just no. copy and paste it. And then them. they do it's called tiling. They can, yeah, yeah. They can do it. You know, uh, and for a stadium full of people, it just doesn't really matter. But, but, we, but what you're just saying, taking what you just say, that's why. We're on strike because the background is saying, no, we're not agreeing to this idea that you can scan us and use us for, or whatever. We're trying to come up with a thing that they will agree to. If, if just, if they didn't withdraw this thing about we could use your image in perpetuity, right. if that stayed in there, we would never, I mean, you would. No, you what wouldn't would get. To, I know, I know, but I, I'm making happen. up a scenario. Yeah, well, yeah. it's it's scary because you don't know what's the end game. Yes, they could use not in background. They could use non-union. I right. mean, they're right to work states in this country where you know, but the but they can't because the union 
because act, the background are members of the union, they can't use me. They can't use any SAG act. They right, could use the all the non-union right. background they want, but they can't use any union actors. They can't use any name actors. They would have for their stars. They they don't exist. Non-union non-union movie stars don't exist except well, they do exist in other countries. Okay. But it's it's it gets complicated, but no, you don't have, you know, this whole question of box up, you know, who's a star that brings people back to the theater? Right. Well, they don't, I mean, maybe there are a couple of English actors who maybe do, but, and they're probably members of SAG anyway, right. because they've done, if they've done an American movie, they're, they're members of the union. Yeah, yeah. So they can't, it's very tricky. They cannot go to non-union for this stuff with, and still use union actors. Right, because there are no non-union stars. No. So, yeah, of course. So they got to stick with you guys. Right. That's the leverage. Oh, I'm going to add my two cents. Yeah, go I'm ahead. Shut up. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, you're good. Do you have to deal with that as a military choreographer? All this bullshit? Um, <laughs> you, well, you know, yeah. Yeah? Well, yeah. I, I have okay. residuals and everything else. My last one was for $1.54 from Finland. Wow. So, um, anyway... <laughs> Is that where you got your yacht? That's from, right. From that, yeah. from that check, <laughs> I, I think I think John makes some excellent points. I'm fascinated by this. This is like, yeah. First of all, it's just like uh, Major League Baseball, or the, you know, these guys that make zillions of dollars are rare in yeah. another world. Right. Most folks who work in the motion picture business or in the industry at all. Make money like regular people. Right, right. Like you and I. And, I mean, we're not buying 12 pools and, and getting a yacht or anything else. Right. And and when the job is over, it's over. You know, so yeah. So while the these guys are making a bucket of money, you're sitting there trying to figure out how to get where your next paycheck is coming right. from. And it's very important to, to protect folks. That, that do this work. I, I, I'm, I'm often th- thought of, number one, I knew this woman that used to date, I think, Tom Seaver, or a, a Major League Baseball guy, when, um, and he was a star. And he had a used car salesman job in the offseason. So it didn't pay him enough money to stay alive. Back then. Back then. Yeah. And and these guys were making money hand over fist, right? Uh, and it just it truly wasn't right. It wasn't fair. Uh, right. It's it's a problem that we're up against always because people think actors oh they make tons of money and some right. of them do, but as you say, it's a small, very very small group that make that make that. And they're, you know, it's also. One of the things that the union that's great about the union yeah. is it not only gives health insurance to act to working actors, but it but you can get a pension. I mean, I collect a pension that is based that is very good that is based on. I, look, I've done over a, now. So we're talking about my career. I've done over a hundred movies. Yeah. A lot of them smaller parts in a small part in Big, a small part in Sophie's Choice, a small, but they add up. And back in those days, those movies, because there were only three networks, right? there was no cable, there was no DVD, DVD, anything, but there was the movie of the week. And when your, and then there was HBO, when your movie, Ghostbusters from 1983, is so is shown on television, you're going to get a piece of that licensing fee. So the librarian in Ghostbusters is one, you know, couple of scenes, great, memorable scenes Mm -hmm. that I, you know, did in 1983. But every quarter, I'm as long as people are still buying that movie... I mean, it's interesting. For the 30th anniversary, I think it was, of Ghostbusters 10 years ago, the, uh, who, wherever it was Amazon or whatever streamer had it, said, great, you can watch Ghostbusters for free. <laughs> great. That means I get nothing. But, <laughs> right. but all, of those, all of those movies, the producers have to pay a pension and health uh, payment on top mm-hmm. of or 
it contain it comes out of that residual. Either it's on top of it or it's in it, depending on something. But still, they pay in. They pay eighteen. I mean, it used to be. I think it may be twenty percent now. Twenty cents on the dollar into health pension and health, and it's invested and over time. And it's one of and the union has a defined benefit pension, not a four hundred one k. It's a old fashioned. And you know, this is a thing. Of course, all the producers, they have 401ks. Everybody in corporate America has 401ks. But they're not going to do that to us because we need, you know, it doesn't work right, for, right. for actors as well. And we've so we have a defined benefit pension. But actors, young actors, who, are, who now are in a streaming world, who don't have residuals like that, are not going to accumulate, are not going to be able to put together a living that is going to pay them a pension when they're old. You know, that's so that you somehow you have to you have to pay for fix it. that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's uh, I, I don't I don't envy you guys having to go through this. It sounds very stressful. And, yes. and you actually are part of the whole negotiations. It's got to be a nightmare. Shoot me. <laughs> Well, let's let's so, get let's get into there's one other piece of this puzzle. Okay, go I ahead. think it's an important piece. When, when you meet a, a great artist um, or a, a person who is very good at his, at his artistic craft, John Rothman is, is right here. Uh, those people can make you believe something with their eyes. Yes, you you can move your body just a, just a slight different way, and all of a sudden, you get it. Yep, yep. Computers. Thankfully, don't do that. Yeah. But if we take that away, I, I can recall one time, um, I'm a big jazz fan, and I went to um, a um, nightclub, and this guy was impersonating Benny Goodman. Uh-huh. And, you know, he had all the notes. He put in the right order and everything else. But, right. you know, it was like, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he hit the notes, but he yeah. he didn't, you it's, couldn't feel it. Yeah. Because it's not Benny Goodman. It's not yeah. Benny no. Goodman. Yeah. He didn't breathe the same way. I'll, I'll never forget. I, I also worked for, for Apple for many years. And um, w- when we bought Beats. Yeah, the headphones. The headphones. Uh, the president of Beats came and addressed us and talked about how they wanted those headphones to hear Ornette Coleman playing uh, soprano sax take a breath. Mm. Mm. And, and, you know, it was weird because I, when I was 18 years old, I was as close as I am to you guys watching Ornette, Ornette Coleman uh-huh. in New York City. Yeah. And I remember him taking a breath. And I just went like, wow. I mean, that's exactly what it I was know about. exactly what you're talking about, too. Because yeah. and that's the difference. Uh, the, year, a few years ago, Joe Walsh put out um, an album called Analog Man. And I heard him talking about it on the Howard Stern show. And he was, he was, they were getting into analog versus digital. And he was talking about how when they recorded Hotel California, you know, sometimes there's a, there's a mistake in there. And now with Pro Tools, you can go in and, you know, that number, that, that, that note that you tried to bend on the guitar, but you didn't bend it quite enough and it didn't reach where it was supposed to. Now you could go and correct that. Or in the old days, you'd have to go and play it again and get it right or leave it. And that's the thing about listening to old music or watching an old film. Th- those mistakes are in there. And most people probably don't even think about it because you figure, well, if they're putting it out there, this must be what perfect is, right? But it's not. It's human. And that's you're taking the human element out of film. Yeah. And that's the that's the problem, I think, with this whole thing. It's like I, I, it, it's how we connect with stories and other people's lives. And, and when you do it as a computer, it just, yes, computers are getting really good at making things look realistic, but it still looks fake. It, there's, there's that you're talking about the eyes, right? Or just a, just a little, just like a little movement of the cheek yeah, muscle yeah, or something. Yeah, that's exactly and, right. and that is all the difference sometimes in yep. a performance. And that, and you, and you don't have to say a word just with the look in your face you get across what the character is feeling. Yep. And we I think we lose that. Even as good as they'll get, they'll they'll never be that way. But again, we're dealing with an upcoming generation that does not have that human connection like we do now. And that's that I think is gonna change things. That's it's a interesting shame. going back to going to Gettysburg. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's get into Gettysburg. The, well, one of the <laughs> so I just, you know, been signing 
autographs for a couple of hours. And a lot of, I mean, not a lot, but there were kids coming up with who it, who it, and mind you, I don't have a very big part, and I'm ki- and General Reynolds is killed, you know, on day one. Mm-hmm. But peop- but somehow it meant so- it registered in some way sure. with people, and these kids were like talking to me about it. And this movie, I mean, we're talking about. I mean, Ron this morning was talking about, you know, this movie made by our generation about a generation, you know, a hundred years ago is going to be passed on to our kids and our, you know, and they, the movie can still, can still inspire, you know, kids to have a sense of, oh, that's what, that's the, that's what a movie is about. Yeah, yeah. That's what, that's what it can do. I want to, you know, be a part of that or something. And, and that's, you know, that's. I think hopeful in in the sense that we're still here thirty years later talking about this movie, yeah. and and these people are coming here to you know to see the director's cut of this movie and yeah. all of that. That's that's uh, and as I say, I'm not promoting it because they all own no. it already. In fact, don't watch it. <laughs> <laughs> don't go near it. Don't watch it backwards. <laughs> well, watch it backwards. <laughs> No, but it's it's uh, like I was saying before. Like we would not be having this conversation today if that movie were never made. That movie, I was always into history and the Civil War and stuff, but for, for whatever reason, Gettysburg kind of just never really caught my attention oh. until this movie came out. Oh, and then, but but even when it came out, it took I think two years, two years before I saw it. Uh, and I saw it in a military history class because we were going to come here on our field trip and he showed it to us in the days leading up to the trip and I fell in love with the I loved the movie and, and then I got here and I was like man they, they did a really good job finding places that looked like this not realizing a shot here right and then uh, it just it created it just caused an addiction for me and I must have seen that movie uh, a million times I went through two VHS uh, sets because I wore them out <laughs> and uh, I just I loved that movie and so and it's very surreal to be sitting here with you right now and to have interviewed all the people that I've interviewed so far Um because I never thought in the 3,000 times I watched that movie that I would ever you know, sit and talk with you guys. Um, so I know hundreds of people that say the same thing mm-hmm. about how this movie got them into something that they are very passionate about today. And it got them wanting to visit this place, which means a lot to us. I mean, I moved here twice. Like I, uh, It's in my blood. Like I'm addicted to Gettysburg. I don't know what it is, and I don't want to figure out what it is. I just accept it. I love this place. This is my home. And I never would have looked into it if it wasn't for this movie. Yeah. So I mean, it it did something. Yeah. And it's a great story to tell, and the performances are good. And uh, you know, like with General Reynolds, like you said, like it's a small part in the theatrical release. But thank God we have the director's cut available. A little bigger. Uh, <laughs> and it's a bigger role, and it's I think it's a it's a better role, like a, a, a fuller yeah. experience of General Reynolds. But you're right. Like before that was available to everybody, everybody. Was sad. In fact, I watched it with uh, Cindy the other night, my girlfriend. She had never seen it before. And I said, well, these people are going to be in town, so you might as well watch this, you know. And um, when General Reynolds uh, died, she went, aw. Like, you know, like it was. <laughs> no, the death was beautiful. Yeah. They really I, yeah. They put that. I mean, what did Ron say today? It's based on the death of General Marsh or something? No, it, it, it was, the, it the, was uh, the painting. General Wolf, the painting of the death of Wolf at the Battle of Quebec. Yeah. And, and Ron came to me and handed me the picture and said, can you recreate this? I said, sure. And and we did it. Yeah, you did it. And uh, and, and you did a great job. I mean, it, I, I, I think I want to address the one thing that you're talking about that's really important. And it goes even back to what we were talking about before. Human beings made this. Living, individual human beings who had all the fears and all the loves and all the hates and all the prejudices and all the crap that is human. Mm -hmm. And it comes through in the screen and people relate to that. They get it. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, you know, when Sam uh, Elliott is up there, you know, waiting for me to come and he, and I'm coming with my, you know, 
soldiers, my troops to help to help him. And you see him, the tear run down his cheek. You know, yes. he wipes a tear, and then he comes down and says, "Like I never." I never liked high command. Yes. I never liked, you know, you guys, but thank God. Yeah. I mean, it's like a very human, you know, well, you know very, what? it's this kind it's, of moment. It's and a that's, great moment. that's what this movie is full of those. I mean, you know, Chamberlain. Can you imagine the relief on, mm-hmm. that Buford had to have felt? Yeah. Yeah. In real life, he's like getting run over by <laughs> hundreds of thousands of guys. Yeah. And, and, you know, he wants to save the lives of his men, of course. Sure. And and nobody. Yeah. And this guy shows up. <laughs> Whoa! Thank you. And he's still ahead of the troops, but he knows yeah. at least they're not far away. That's right. Yeah. You know, another really human moment in that scene, which is only in the director's cut, is when you you uh, you're giving some orders to your staff, and you turn around and you say to the guy, uh, Joe, how can you see through those? You know, oh, and yeah, he's got yeah, mud that, on his glasses. Oh, that, that is. But that was because it was just you know the tension of the moment, and then you look at that, and then there's a really human moment right. of levity there, right. which I wish they had kept in the theatrical release because that I was think really that good. Moment, maybe no, no, maybe not. It's no. director's cut. No, yeah. you know who that guy was? You? No. No. Who? No, he was the costume designer. That was Michael Boyd. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Joe. Joe. Yeah. I mean, and then the, the fact that I say we go to that, my adjutant or whatever, go into town and tell these people to get inside. This yeah. is liable to be a little dispute here today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little dispute. <laughs> yeah, an um, understatement. Yeah. So what do you And know? that gives, you know, and that's a per- what you're saying. It makes him a real person. Yeah. Not just a, you know. A statue. A statue. Yeah. yeah. Or an AI. Or, or, or yeah. 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 Yes. Who, who yes. can pretend to be, pre, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but I think you can see through people that are pretending to be something they're not. Of course. And uh, that doesn't do anything. It's just pretend. Right. It doesn't mean a thing. No. But when, when you actually can help somebody feel what was going on at the time, you've really done a great service to our generation, the next generation. And the people that really did it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you do. Um, somebody in the comment section says, fun fact, an old acquaintance of mine shot Reynolds in the movie. He also is the same guy that almost shot Kevin Costner at the beginning of Dances with Wolves, but gets <laughs> popped between the eyes. So I guess his friend's a reenactor who is the guy that they have in the taken tree. the shot at you. Uh, yeah. I know his name. Who? Jim Batchelder. Oh really? Yeah, he's is it related guy. to the Batchelder? I, I, he lives here. John Batchelder. Okay. Yeah, oh, interesting. Be, yeah. Huh. Um, so, uh, when was that? In the fall or the spring when you guys were here? It was summer. It was, it was summer August. August. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Recently, when we did the um, video with Gary. You know, I think it was spring. I think early, so, yeah. spring. Early spring. Things yeah. were just starting to come out on the trees. It was we early spring. We haven't seen each other for 30 years. No. Yeah. And so, uh, what was that like? Because we went back, uh, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, uh, the American Battlefield Trust has some videos out of the actors going back to the locations where some of their iconic scenes were filmed, and we went to where General Reynolds was killed. What was it like going back there? Did you recognize it at all? Because apparently yeah. there's a building there now that wasn't there then. Well, in general. Yeah, what, you can recognize the hills, but there was a yeah. farm there. It was recognizable, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's funny. I mean, it's part of the experience of a, you know, Part of the great thing about being an actor, and I say if I say this, <clears throat> you know, like I've been in these negotiations and they've been trying to say the least, and people, you know, are trying to fix things that are wrong right. with with being an actor and an actor's life and trying to, you know, and so there's a lot of complaining about about it, and you know, for good reason, but. To be remem- to be reminded of wait a minute, this is also a great a great thing to do with your life because the experiences are you have these incredibly rich experiences yes. and you create relationships out of them that are you know deep in a way even though they're only you know it could only be a week or a they're day or something like yeah. that it's and. My, it's interesting because, you know, 30, 30 years ago and, you know, Dale and I were just saying, you know, we were in our early 40s when we did this and now, you know, 74, the, <clears throat> but the, it's vivid. I can remember those, ba- that battlefield, that, that scene. So, I mean, like 
viscerally, uh, sensorily, it was extremely hot. <laughs> that uniform was extremely, you know, hot. Hot. That horse was, I mean, I was going to say, that horse, I grow the greatest horse. I grow, I mean, that horse, his name was Frog Prince, <laughs> was a 40 year old stallion. Really? That pulled the, among his many credits, he pulled a caisson in, in Kennedy's. Two. No Two. kidding. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And he belonged to a reenactor. We had come down earlier <laughs> in the, we had come down. I don't know, before they started production, for people who are going to do a lot of riding, mm -hmm. which is a lot of people, to do a, to work on riding. Like a camp. Like a riding thing. And, yeah. and a wrangler would take us out to a field and we got a horse and yeah. we rode, we rode around. It was really fun. And I thought I had this horse that was, I thought that would be my horse and we were getting along great. And then when I got there, no, that's not your horse. You've got this other horse. And I look at this black, gorgeous giant black stallion but this horse was he had i mean that first day when i was talking about coming on the field and everybody saluting me as general reynolds and there were marks the horse where the horse where you're supposed to go because obviously the camera has to focus on the you know it's funny okay <laughs> somebody who was i had a line about abner double day Okay. Yep. Go tell Abner Doubleday to get here quick. Pretty damn quick, I think it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, was that the guy who invented baseball? That's, That's the guy who allegedly, allegedly. Invented, allegedly invented yeah. baseball. He He's credited with it. There too. Yeah. Yes. Because yes. uh, it's funny, this morning, the autograph, this morning they were handing me baseballs <laughs> to autograph. Really? And Abner Doubleday would have been I, I thought, well, okay, that makes sense. I mean, they were baseballs with Civil War, with, you know, Lee with Civil War people on it. They must have gotten them from a... Huh. Actually, after Reynolds was killed, Abner Doubleday assumed command of the first oh, corps. Right. See? And this is one of my memories of coming on the thing in that fabulous horse and my line I'm supposed to so the horse has to stop on his mark so they can focus on him and say get Abner double D tell Abner Doubleday to come here double quick or whatever the, right. the military jargon was on the double and I said <laughs> tell Admiral Double <laughs> tell Admiral Bring Double the Navy. Day, get Admiral Double Day on the phone. You know, it was like such a wait a minute, <laughs> not Ad, Admiral it's Abner Double Day. Okay, so let's add to the complication of what he's talking about. Okay, so the the First Army Corps in in the real Battle of Gettysburg attacked in a in a formation called on echelon mm -hmm. where the divisions came kind of stacked on one another but like cattle right and and so there was a group a group uh, that was a little bit to the right of the first group and then a little bit to the right of the second group was a third group right. and he had to ride in between them to get to this point, and these guys are marching right. into battle. And, of course, the bombs are going off and what have you. And it was very difficult to do that, especially who knew. We didn't know what the horse was going to do. Uh, we had good wranglers, but, uh, you know, we didn't know if John was going to be a great rider. There were several people that weren't. Right. Not gonna, right. They were not regular people, but anyway. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, the horse but, knew what he was doing. The horse, the I thought, horse, oh my god! I mean, horse this, horse, mark. this horse hits the mark. This horse, yeah, hit, yeah because the horse was in glory after the Kennedy. He was in glory. He was. He worked. His resume at that point was much better than mine. He was, but big, he was, he was like sixteen and a half hands. He was a big horse. Great, yeah, horse. he's a huge horse. Yeah. A great horse, and you know, Sam Elliott is a experienced horse. Men, horse riding yeah. actor. Right. But, and to do scenes on, there's something, doing a scene on horseback is just so great because you can't fake, I mean, it yeah, makes you yeah. so honest. You're sort of connected. You it's like being it. connected to this, this enormous animal yeah. breathing below you in yeah. your, between your legs. I know. You're on, you know, it makes you grounded and honest and, Oh, I love that horse. Yeah. It's funny because uh, you you mentioned that you know it was other movies and everything and knew what to do. I had uh, an experience out in uh, Wyoming, and I swear to God, it, it because this horse was a uh, retired stunt horse from the movies. 
I think it saved my life because we were galloping. We were chasing a herd of mule deer for fun. And uh, I'm sure the mule deer loved that. Well, the guide's horse like was obsessed with them. And anytime they would see them, he said, he's like, he's going to take off and I'm going to let him. You don't have to follow, you know, catch up if you want to. And I'm like, no, I'm, I'm going for this. You know, I'm out west, man. This is like I'm doing this. So we're going like full gallop. And neither I nor the horse see a little bit of a ditch, like a runoff. Mm. And his front legs go in it, and he starts to almost somersault. But, like, he he, he, he caught himself and righted himself, took a second to just stop, and then stood himself up and then went right back into the gallop. I had to stop him because my saddle came loose. But... I swear to God, this saved my life. Like he, he's he was used to being tripped from the old days in the film, I guess, or, because they used to trip him, or I don't know what the hell they did. But whatever, he he knew how to get back yeah. on his feet. There's something about those animals. I, oh my they, God. I know what you're talking about. With I was raised on a horse farm. My father trained horses for okay. a living, and they they have a great uh, sense of you. Yeah. Mm. And they can feel mm. your feelings mm. and emotions. Mm. My brother could never ride. I was a pretty good rider. Because he was scared? He was scared. He was, every time he got on a horse, he just threw him off. You know? <laughs> and, uh, um, no, I love him. But, I, uh, but yeah. they're, they're big animals. However, they can they feel mm. it's it's not like they're sitting there having a conversation mm. with you, you. But they feel you. Yeah. Have you read Horse? Yeah. As a matter book. of fact, yeah. Yeah. It's so beautiful. And it's so that's what it's about. Right. Yeah, there, there's just a wonderful simpatico with those yeah. animals, yeah. and and I live in the city now. I've been ridden a horse in thirty in twenty years, maybe, but um, you know, make I, me want to get on a horse now. I know, I know. I, I, I spent my I spent my <laughs> Let's entire go find youth some. But on a speaking horse. of horses, here's a good here's a little good uh, fun fact about Gettysburg. You know, Ron Ron Maxwell the, Maxwell, our director. Was sort of <laughs> was sort of obsessed with authenticity. I mean, things the the level of authentic in this movie is like incomparable, and it's obviously it paid off in many ways. But when I looked at in that first day, and when I went up to get you know outfitted in my uniform, and I looked at the McClellan saddle. Mm-hmm. Mm. I thought, oh, shit, I am not getting on a wooden saddle. <laughs> I mean, he had it. I don't know if anybody actually used it. They were just there. But, I mean, thank goodness it was like an English, a normal yeah. saddle. But there was a wooden, I mean, the McClellan yeah, saddle. A yeah. wooden tree, yeah. A wooden tree. The, the McClellan saddle, by the way, yeah. is a great yeah. saddle. It's, doesn't it it's, hurt? No. No. Because they, they put leather on it and stuff like that. But, But at the end of the day... You can you can get back in those days, the the officers in the United States Army rode uh, horses in what they called dragoon style. So they didn't do any posting or anything else. The 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 stirrups were the length of your legs, right? And you rode straight legged, and you mm. just rode with the horse, right? Mm. And you can't get thrown from a McClellan saddle. Huh. It's it's almost impossible. They're, they are comfortable. I, I rode one once. Huh, they're comfortable. Yeah. But did anybody did anybody in the movie use them? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah. They did. Yeah. I yours was yours wasn't a McClellan. It was a no. No. no it was, a, it was a, a, uh, English saddle. I don't know. It was like a. It had the silver. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Horn. Uh, yeah. It has a name and I've forgotten it. Now was that was that because that's what Reynolds? Yes. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh. So they were so yeah. really so down to the saddle they were getting the details. Oh, we were done. <laughs> believe me, every yeah. night. <laughs> wow. Every like, night, I I got in so much trouble sometimes because I'd argue with them. Yeah. About that's Uniforms not right. Forms and this isn't right and that's not right. Now yeah. clearly you weren't uh, doing anything about the beards. That wasn't your department. No, I couldn't. <laughs> but the beards were authentic. I mean, in other words, style wise. Beard was was authentic. they were different yeah yeah, they yeah. Were, and you know it was you know what I knew you didn't have a beard but you looked great as John Reynolds <laughs> yeah and and who cares no it doesn't yeah, matter. at the end of the day everybody knows it's fake we got, we, we got, yeah that's it no we got it's a the movie. emotions it's only a movie yeah. yeah. Oh, but no, no, but it's not. See, that's the thing. Yeah, it's not. It's not only a movie. And I know you were saying before, while we were waiting, um, you you said that uh, you know we were just working. It was just a job for us. Like we didn't, you know, you don't know that what you're working on is going to be something that you're going to exactly. be sitting here, you know, thirty years later, buddy. I'm sitting there signing autographs for these people. I'm thinking, if I could have, is there any?
any way I could have imagined right. there, while I was I doing the scene. That, that And people were showing me, they were giving me pictures of, you know, the scene with me and Sam. And, and you know, I thought, God, I mean, if somebody, told, 30 years from now, you're going to be in Gettysburg signing autographs of this moment. Right. No. You wouldn't have believed people it. People who weren't even born yet. Yeah. 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 Get you to sign your name. Yeah, now, it's true. You have, uh, I'm looking at a, a million things here in your filmography. You've done a lot of stuff. Ha, of all the other things that you've done, has there been something like Gettysburg yeah. where there has? I, I've had a very fortunate career yeah. in that regard, that I've been in some but, I mean, truly great movies. Where 30 and, years later, yeah. you're. Well, it's not 30 years, but I have to say, like, United 93 yeah. was a movie yeah. that had that same kind of. You know, historical importance. Yeah. That's a, a great director, a wonderful cast, creating something that I believe, even though people had trouble with it, it's a movie that will last. Oh, people yeah. People will go back and see, yeah. and it ha- and making it, unlike Gettysburg, where, okay, yeah, we are fighting a war, but, but General Longstreet was holding court in a bar up there for the officers and we were I mean it was fun we it was a boys you know a dream a kind of a dream to be up to be a general in the union army so and to the, be the, able to the yeah. United 93 was not fun no it was really not fun it was a lot of work but and you lived through the event too you so I mean, are the, you based out of New York I live in New York, but that movie was shot in England. But no, but I know. But I'm saying, are you? Uh, were you there in New York at the time of 9/11? I was. So, I was. So, so I it's, saw. Yeah. I I saw the first wow. plane go in. I thought, oh, that's really horrible. A little plane has crashed into the <laughs> South Tower, yeah. Yeah. and then the second. Yes. Yeah. My children were in. My son went through the tunnel. Because he went to school in Brooklyn, he went through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel. You know, to go to like. 15 minutes before he for just that. got through and then he couldn't get home for yeah, a week. Right. You know, it was, no, I was, ve- and I live in downtown Manhattan. So the smell, the smoke, the whole yeah. was very, and then it was like a year later that we're making it. And the call sheet for that would say, for that section of making the movie, the it would say hijacking to crash. Uh. And that means they would do the entire thing from hijacking to the crash. And they had a camera, it's amazing, a camera, we called it the bungee cam. It was on a track down the middle of the plane. We were on a plane and the cinematographer was on a chair that his sister pushed down the <laughs> aisle and he was on, and he would do it like that. And then they put it all together and made a, something amazing out of it. So, but that was also an incredible, incredibly intense, like meaningful thing. And, um, you know, Ghostbusters. Yeah. No, I don't know. So, yeah, no, but Ghost, I mean, Ghostbusters is well, a big movie. People still love that movie. Well, the Ghost, you know, okay, but this is sort of the thing that I'm talking about in actor's life. So, the morning that I shot the library scene in Ghostbusters, it was a very early call. It was at the public library. It was maybe at six o'clock. So I was in the makeup trailer at five in the morning with Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and, and um, you know. Ernie Hudson? No, not Ernie Hudson. Harold Ooh. Ramis? Harold no, no, Ramis. Just, yeah. yeah, thank you. May he rest in peace. And um, it was just hilarious. It, I mean, these guys were so alive to each other and funny and fun. And it was just like, you know, just great. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, oh God, I mean, I mean you know, in TV, uh, you know, I've had some great, some great yeah, work in television. A lot well. of t- taxi. <laughs> no, no, that's 2004. Well, the funny thing about Taxi, I mean, you know, it's one crazy scene with Queen Latifah, and but people <laughs> love that. But that's a movie. That's also a movie people like. Yeah, love. Uh, the Devil's Devil Wears Prada. You you were in a lot of the I Heart Huckabees, Ghostbusters, of course. That. But in, in Devil, but I'm the happy ending of Devil Wears Prada, and that's another thing when people say to me, you know, have I ever seen, you know, have I seen your work or something? They I. Uh, have you seen Devil Wears Prada? Everybody's, every woman hmm. in I haven't America seen it. Has seen that movie. <laughs> when you came to work on um, on Gettysburg, you were working on uh, in a soap opera, right? Was it? Oh, well, I was work. I did. I, I was in a soap for 
as the world turns the world or turns. something. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know. How do you like soap opera days, acting? It's, it's kind of different, isn't it? Yeah, I never liked it. Yeah. I never liked it. And I was never, even though I shouldn't have maybe, it up. <laughs> maybe I was playing a, I was, I was playing a brain surgeon. Yep. And you had to re. It, it, no, it was it was not my favorite, and and soap operas have kind of disappeared. I mean, back in the day, a lot of terrific actors worked on soaps, and there was it was a whole thing, but it's gone. I mean, that's literally a tribute to Ron Maxwell, because he was uh, pretty much involved in the acting scene in New York. And he spent a lot of time finding these people, finding folks yeah. to be in this film. And a lot of a lot of folks came out of New York. He had a great casting director. He had, I mean, she was like one of the the she premier. Was. Her name was Joy Todd. Yeah, she Joy was, Todd. I remember. She was the premier. She was like a premier casting director. <laughs> um, the. Uh, the the uh, uh, what what's going on? Who's oh, you looking at pictures? We're looking at pictures. Here, let me see. I can show the. Yeah, camera. we're not paying any attention to you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the horse we're talking about. Yes, right, that sure. horse. Oops. And the guy, I really want to. I really want to know who the guy. What happened to the guy who was my like lieutenant? He was so. He was. I liked him a lot. Oh, um, the he was a reenactor, wasn't he? Mm-mm. No, he was an actor. No, he was an actor who I think I looked him up once, and he became a um, a comedian, sort of a stand-up comedian and a writer. I think in L.A. This guy. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh! You got like a whole credit. stack. His name is something like John Heffernan or something. John. Let's see. Maybe somebody will know him. I recognize his face right away. <laughs> that's how about that look? Yeah, that's a good look. Wow, you got a lot of. Oh, this is a cool shot here. Oh, yeah, I can see this. Uh, yeah, the 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 yeah the woman who who had uh, yeah. So we did a lot of talking about this horse, and there's that John next to me. But look at that horse. Yeah, yeah, he's a beauty, and he was forty years old. Huh? Forty, wow. forty-three. I think they told me. Forty-three. That's sure amazing. He's gone now, but so wow. we did, now. Have you ridden horses on film before Gettysburg? No. So this was your first time? No. First time I, ever on a horse? No. Period? No, no, I rode, you know, as a kid. You know, I okay, rode, I yeah. rode, hor- I, I rode horses. And my sister had a horse. And we, we had a house in Cape Cod. And, um, and um, one more. And this is actually a picture that's a tribute to the gentleman sitting cool. on my right. To Dale. Look at that battle. Oh, that's nice. That's like a painting. Yeah. Except for uh, Karen Collins, who's the, the woman in the turquoise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't quite work. <laughs> but Oh, yeah. <laughs> but there's, a, there's that one guy in there with that really, that hat that he has on that looks like it was made out of a blanket. Right, and, right yeah. I, that really bothered me. I was, <laughs> um, to, to this day, I'm still well, bothered by that hat. Yeah. Yeah, what did you just ask me? I'm sorry. Uh, about horseback riding. And oh, so, yeah. oh, well, no, it's worth saying this because I realized that the horse was, like, so key for the for the part. And I had not ridden since I was a kid. So I was, I was, uh, I found a, a riding coach in Queens, in like a park in sure. Queens, Forest Park in Queens. Yeah. And I, I said to her, you know, I want you to, you know, how do I, I'm going to look, how do I look like I really know what I'm doing? And she was very good at like, you know, you're looking through the ear, through the horse's ears, you're holding the reins in this way you're doing, she coached me. And then I would, and for, I don't know how many times it wasn't just once I would, it was just so great. I would go out to central to forest park in Queens and go riding with her. Yeah. Um, that and that nice. was my, and then we came here and we, we did more riding. Um, yeah. And then that horse. I mean, it was, that was just amazing. There's a couple of things. So, uh, every year, uh, here at Gettysburg, we have a giving spree and the Seminary Ridge Museum, mm-hmm. uh, does like a 24 hour thing. And, uh, I go to it to, you know, show my support. I had to fall asleep at like one o'clock in the morning cause that's, I can't stay up late anymore, but, um, <laughs> we watch movies. And so of course we watch the movie Gettysburg, but last year, 
we watched a, uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like, it's and they said the beforehand, there's like, well, there's two Gettysburg connections. <laughs> One is there's the Battle of Gettysburg depicted. And also John Rothman, who played General Reynolds, is in the movie. And sure enough, there you are. Jefferson Davis, no less. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. The, the and I did a lot of, because re- we shot that in New Orleans, in which was it's a great place to make a movie, really. And... Um, and there's a museum in New Orleans. Oh, it's a great to, museum. A great museum. Yeah. To Jefferson Davis. You know, Jefferson Davis house or something. Hmm. You know, the dress in which he escaped. I don't know. He he's he was quite a character. Um was not a very big part, but it was very funny that at the end of it, when I sell the when the vampire I call the the vampires say they'll ha- they show a map of Gettysburg. Yeah. We're holding a map and then it turns to sort of yeah. blood yeah, or yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I got invited to be on a. I, I turned this job down, but this was just before. Um, yeah, I think it was between uh, Last of the Mohicans and, and Gettysburg. Okay. They they made a movie, and Martin Sheen was in it for a, a New York minute about a a, a a regiment of Confederate zombies. Oh. The Alabama 43rd. Okay. And they wanted me to be the historic guy on it. And I'm, it's like, a zombie movie. <laughs> zombie movie. Yeah. yeah. What it was historic they nothing. They did whatever zombies do. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. And, and, and they even had, like, the the way the regiments are organized. There's the colonel, lieutenant colonel, major, adjutant, and the sergeant. Those are the, the big five that run a regiment. And, and, I, and they even had the colonel, lieutenant colonel, major... Adjutant and the the fortune teller. <laughs> you know, I'm just noticing. I'm not speaking. He's speaking into a mic. I'm not speaking into a mic. You're yet. speaking on. You got it on your. Oh, I got it on my. It's right under your okay. chin. Okay. <laughs> so you pull, pull it up a little bit. Though. See how hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a crazy world. So, uh, <laughs> thirty years later, you're obviously enjoying yourself here so far. I mean, your hands probably a little tired, right? But I mean, this yeah, has got to no, be cool. No, this is very cool. Yeah, very cool. I'm very, very, very glad I, 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 I did it. I'm very glad. And um, you know, I was just thinking about something about how great that seminary museum was, which you know, when we were here yeah. last, we, you know, that all the medical. St- I mean, that's an amazing. Oh, that's my favorite yeah. floor. Is the medical floor? Yeah, yeah. And you know, another thing is uh, people cannot help themselves when they go there, especially for the first time, they go on the lawn and they look up to the cupola and they go, what goes, John? Everybody oh, really? does it. Yeah, we all do it. Wow, yeah. Wow, wow. And then if they're up there, they'll yell down to nobody. There's a devil to pay. Everybody recreates the whole scene. I'm telling you, it is a cult classic. Yeah. It is a, there is, there's a whole nerddom uh, around this film. And, uh, you know, you guys, thanks. You did a great job making the film, and we thank you very thank much. You. For oh, doing thank it. you. Thank this you. This was totally fun, and and I have to say, I are these these podcasts. I mean, I I know this is live yeah. stream, but yeah. is it also available as a anywhere you find podcasts? The audio will be there as well. Yeah, because I it. would actually like to. I, I'll probably send this to my colleagues on the negotiating committee because I think we did a. I think we did a good job, sure. especially the AI. Yeah. The AI part of this yeah. conversation. Did, did I do um, a good job at representing yeah. the film yeah. viewer? Absolutely. Yes, you did. I think I, you did. It's, yeah. it's, Should I go to the negotiating table now to represent us? If you get us some money, yes, at absolutely. The, <laughs> at the moment, if there is no negotiating table. Well, I, no, I'm going to represent what we would be willing to pay for. And we're not right. willing to pay for computer fake John Rothman. We want the real John Rothman. There you go. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you could have him. <laughs> Guys, thank you very All much right. for doing this. Thank I really you. appreciate it. Thank and you. enjoy the rest of your stay Thanks here. Very much. Let's thank get you. something to eat. Thumbs and up. don't forget, thank you to Joe, ladies and gentlemen, back thank there. You, he Joe. ran the cameras. Joe, thank you, Joe. Joe. Let's turn the camera on Joe so we can see him waving. Oh, there he is. Wave, Joe. There you go. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, this was, I'm so glad we did this. I'm I so too. glad we did it in person Me too. instead of on the phone. I can't stand been, doing it over the phone. It would I love this. really hard to do it. I thank you so much for taking the time. And you. It was good. We had a good. Thank you all for watching. We were last yeah. We'll take care of yourselves, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, guys. Very nice. Our hot
streets of Scout have got us fame For soon tis known from whence we came Wherever we go they dread the name of Gary Owen and Glory Instead of Spa we'll drink down there and 